When it comes to competitors for SpaceX, rocket enthusiasts will immediately think of Blue Origin. However, there is another competitor that once dominated the skies for many years and is now gearing up to reclaim the launch market currently held by SpaceX. It's the United Launch Alliance, with decades of experience that is returning to the space race with its Vulcan rocket. Unfortunately, after nearly long times of research and development, this rocket has yet to leave the ground. It seems to be destroying all the glory that previous rockets that ULA had achieved. Where will Vulcan take ULA's future? Is ULA over? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. ULA was born into an unlikely marriage in 2006 when the Pentagon allowed Lockheed and Boeing to form a joint venture that gave the newly formed company ULA a monopoly on all military launch contracts. At the time, the Pentagon was focused on assured access to space, emphasizing reliable rockets that would fly successfully over cost. ULA essentially operated as an arm of the Pentagon while raking in billions of dollars. However, by 2014, ULA wasn't the rocket industry stalwart it had been since its founding almost a decade earlier, when it had a monopoly on lucrative Pentagon contracts to lift national security satellites into orbit. Instead, the company was under intense pressure. Elon Musk and SpaceX were on the prowl, disrupting the industry and threatening to take a large chunk of ULA's government business. Congress was moving to ban the Russian-made engine the company used in its workhorse rocket. ULA's parent companies, Lockheed Martin and Boeing, were growing desperate, and there were fears that they might want to cut their losses and move on from the company. So when Tony Bruno accepted the offer to lead the faltering company, which had recently ousted its CEO, he knew what he was getting into. It was clear they were in serious trouble. This is a company that wasn't supposed to survive. Now, about eight years later, after enduring what Bruno called a quest to completely transform the company, ULA, once in a downward spiral, is experiencing a remarkable transformation. Bruno now says he gave ULA a slim chance of surviving. In the dark period, he saw an opportunity to improve a company that had enjoyed a monopoly for years and gotten complacent. Not having to compete, it extracted enormous sums from the Pentagon, which didn't flinch at the exorbitant prices as long as the company kept up its launch success. However, the launch market is changing rapidly, and ULA's fear has arrived. In recent years, the business of launching spacecraft and astronauts to orbit has been dominated by SpaceX, the rocket company started and run by Elon Musk. SpaceX's lower prices and prolific launch rate have been a boon to satellite operators, NASA, and the U.S. Space Force. This is likely to move the Pentagon away from its previous position with a single supplier. That's why Tori Bruno decided that the company couldn't just sit back while Elon and SpaceX gobbled it up. We had to take the fight to the competitors, Bruno said. You can't ignore the other guy and let the company do whatever they want and have an open playing field. He also knew that he had to get ULA off the Russian-made RD-180 engine. ULA has developed a modern rocket named Vulcan with the aim of replacing their two existing rockets, Atlas V and Delta IV, which were once reliable but became outdated due to their high costs. Currently, the last Delta IV is scheduled for the next year, and although there are still some Atlas V rockets, all of them have been previously booked and assigned to different customers. Therefore, ULA is eager to bring Vulcan into operation. In other words, it can be said that Vulcan will be the primary responsibility rocket in ULA's future, determining whether ULA can continue to exist. However, the production and launch process of Vulcan did not go as expected. It's been delayed numerous times in the past since 2020, reaching its peak with its latest postponement. Vulcan's first flight was initially scheduled for May, sending the private Peregrine lunar lander toward the moon. However, it was delayed when the upper stage of the Vulcan Centaur exploded during testing back in March. The incident occurred when the entire rocket had all the necessary engines and structures. This raised doubts about the technical reliability of ULA, the unit directly responsible for this incident. Following ULA's downward trend, we still can't be certain when it'll launch, although Tori Bruno, ULA's CEO, insists that Vulcan will launch by the end of 2023. But as we can see, there are just under three months left till the end of the year. And I bet Vulcan will take even more time. And if Vulcan can't take flight soon, it's truly hell for ULA. Earlier this year, there were leaked pieces of information suggesting that ULA is going to be sold. And if everything goes as predicted, this would mark the end of an era that's lasted for almost two decades. In its current situation, Vulcan not only faces indefinite delays, but also the potential abandonment by commercial customers. The recent launch of the Project Kuiper satellite for Amazon's broadband satellite program 
took place on the Atlas 5501 rocket on October 6th at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. While this mission was initially intended for the first launch of the Vulcan Centaur rocket, the numerous delays made the project unfeasible. Simultaneously, the upcoming projects for Vulcan, especially satellite missions for the government, are crucial. Any delays in these missions could cause significant disruptions in their plans. Of course, this delay is not only ULA's responsibility, but also the engine manufacturing company serving Vulcan, which is Blue Origin. After realizing there'd be no more rocket engine supply from Russia, Tori Bruno sought alternative engine manufacturing partners. One such partner was Aerojet Rocketdyne, a leading company in the industry and a seasoned manufacturer with a rich history in the space business. The other option was Bezos' Blue Origin, a relatively new company but secretly working on a new tool for many years. Finally, in 2018, Bruno chose Blue Origin over Aerojet Rocketdyne. However, this deal did not unfold as smoothly as he hoped. Everything ULA has received up to the present moment truly seems like a joke. Bezos had invested heavily in the BE-4 engine development, needing it to power his own large rocket, which would become known as New Glenn. Having ULA as a customer would help offset some of those costs. Since then, however, Blue Origin has not been the best of partners. A couple years after the BE-4 announcement, Blue Origin changed its public stance on bidding for national security launch contracts. Officials said the New Glenn rocket would, in fact, compete with Vulcan for lucrative military launches. For many engineers and executives at ULA, this felt like a betrayal because without U.S. Space Force contracts, the company would likely not exist. Furthermore, Blue Origin repeatedly delayed delivering engines to ULA. The delivery to ULA's facility in Alabama took place more than two years later than planned. It's unclear why the BE-4 engines are so significantly behind schedule, especially considering they've been under-researched since 2011. This has garnered considerable criticism from the public, directing mockery at Blue Origin by asking, where are Tori's engines, Jeff? The next question is likely to be, when will Tori's rocket launch? Well, delivering rocket engines is one thing, but whether those engines are reliable is another matter. Disappointment struck again when the BE-4 engine intended for the Vulcan flight encountered issues and exploded at the end of June. The hope for Vulcan's early flight is now even more challenging. Anyway, Time can't be reversed to change Tori Bruno's mistaken decision. The most crucial thing that ULA needs to do now is to conduct tests for their new Vulcan rocket. There's still a lot of work to be done. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.